Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, and I am here today with Maria Liberati, and she is an award-winning chef, author, blogger, influencer, and entrepreneur, and a producer of her own podcast. Maria is a world award-winning um, author and blogger. She is also a fabulous professional chef, and she has won awards for her her book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, and she has a book series, and she also, like I was mentioning before, has a fabulous podcast, and she's a contributor to many national and international publications, multimedia journalist, and she has a lot to tell you about cooking, so I'm so excited to have you today, Maria. I, um, you know, when I was reading your bio, and we were, I was looking at all the things you accomplished, I was just amazed how much you've done with cooking, and I I'm so glad to have you on our show. So why don't you let the audience a little know a little more about you and tell them, you know, uh, just uh, all the things that you've been doing. Great. Well, Stacey, first, I want to say thank you for having me. Also, I'm excited to be here and uh, share myself, I guess, myself and my life and everything with your audience and with you all. So yes, I, let's see, when can I start? <laughs> well, I wasn't. I didn't originally, you know, my career wasn't originally in the culinary arts. It was really, um, I, I actually went to school, went to university to be a linguist. And while I was doing that, so I was studying French, Spanish, and Italian. And while I was doing that, I was also modeling. And um, fast forward, I ended up um, modeling in Italy and kind of, really discovering all of my family there because I did have a lot of my family um, was still in Italy like my grandfather and my grandmother and my other set of grandparents came here but they had brothers and sisters in Italy and most of them did not come to America so I had loads of family to meet so I ended up going there I was modeling and and all of a sudden on like off times I would try to you know find family and uh study a little bit more of my family and basically my my dad's family my my dad's dad had his family had this big vineyard in the mountains of Abruzzo which is in it's kind of it, it's kind of south but it's not real far south of Italy they consider it southern Italy so it's really beautiful it's kind of still untouched you, you have the mountains and the sea so I ended up staying with them sometimes and studying you know wine producing cheese making bread making all the things that they did there and then uh my grandmother actually her family had a bakery and they used to make this uh, traditional bread that they make in their town this was in another part of Italy so I got to you know kind of hang out with them and study stuff and all that there and actually found one of my great aunt's recipe books written all in Italian and, and kind of translated that because I knew Italian so all of these things kind of added up together and um, I really fell in love with food there in Italy. I'm sure if anybody has been in Italy, it's not. They understand what I'm talking about. It's, yeah. it's not hard to fall in love with the food. Oh, yeah. Um, so you know that. Yes. Yeah, I've been and there just, a couple of times. So go on. <laughs> there you go. You no, know, you know, so I just really fell in love with the food there. And um I, I also was a writer. So I did write while I was modeling. I was, I did write for some fashion magazines on like natural health and beauty and stuff. So I started combining my, you know, writing with, um, with the, you know, when I studied the culinary arts, I guess I, I'm kind of fast forwarding. So I ended up first studying the culinary arts professionally. I ended up working with you know, at my relatives, uh, kind of studying with my relatives, but then, um, and, and I was starting to do these cooking programs because I spoke Italian and English. So mm -hmm. at resorts, it really came in handy to, to be able to have those two languages and, um, you know, speak two languages since most of the people taking cooking courses are not really Italian. They're usually from right. other countries. So I would do that. And then I, I did end up studying, um, the culinary arts in Italy formally 
And then as I was starting to say, I started combining, you know, my writing skills with, I just thought, you know what, let me sit down and write a book. And I just really, I had to have people kind of almost forcing me to do that. Cause I'm like, <laughs> people really like to read a book about Italian cooking. Everybody knows how to do this or how to do that because actually I took it for granted because I grew up in Italian family and right. that's what we just did that all the time. And uh, we knew how to do that. So I just said, like, who's going to want to read a book about that stuff? <laughs> and I ended up, I ended up doing it, writing the book, but I decided, you know what, I love to read creatively too. So I made it more of kind of like a, a, a memoir, but um, just really stories of my experiences in these little towns in Italy and the recipes that went along with it. Cause I, yeah. I just felt also that Italian food is really an experience. It's not just, you know, throwing ingredients together. It's really an experience. If oh, you definitely. Eat it, as you know, right. If you yeah. eat it in Italy in the place that you're eating it at and all the experience around, it just adds to the food. So I, you know, thought, let me just you know, put that in and put all the experience in and the ingredients and all that. And um, that's how I did my first book. It's just called The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. And I came up with that title because um, I did study little like in Fran French and German and Austrian cooking. And the fr French cooking is very complicated, the traditional. And, um, you know, I just started realizing, you know, Italian cooking it's, it's like, it is like an art because it's so simplistic. Yeah. So I just, the basic art of Italian cooking, because it, it is really a basic art. So uh, that's really how I came up with, with my, um, with my first book actually is, uh, is just from all of that and, and all that experience. And then fast forward, it just kept growing from that first book. Um, so That's I did, amazing. yes, yeah, it's, <laughs> I just, I would have, I mean, if you would have told me that I was going to get into the culinary arts, you know, before I did, I would have been like, why? No, like, you know what because, I, uh, you know, it's, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go. <laughs> what I was going to say is that when I, you know, when I've been to Italy, what I noticed yeah. is that. When I used to go to we used to go to little family restaurants you find them on the corner of the streets and right. you know the food was phenomenal and you didn't even need to eat a lot and you were full and exactly. you know what I think made such a big difference was they were just they were picking the tomatoes and they were picking you know they were yeah. cooking the fresh uh, fish and getting it in the water and bringing it you know yes. to the restaurant and everything was fresh and maybe you can like tap in about the difference between how fresh ingredients fresh food fresh spices herbs you know make such a difference in the taste versus you know food that you know might be processed or might have been you know um not really as fresh you know how the difference between fresh fresh ingredients and fresh food versus you know food that you know is is not you know so fresh and you know exactly and that is you you hit the nail on the head really so my my mom's mom she was from italy but i i just want to this has this story that relates to what you're saying so she loved to cook and especially like on Sundays, we would be at her house and all my cousins and aunts, and all, we'd all cook the family meal together. And she would always just say, you know, like she would get the ingredients and do the same recipes, but she, this was be, the, before I ever went to Italy and she would tell us it's just not the same taste. And I never understood what she meant. But when I went to Italy, that's what it is. You were you're like, oh, you feel like you're awakened by these tastes that they're, they're real flavors that you've never had, you know, yeah. almost like you've never had. Your oh, mouth definitely. Is like, oh my God. You know, this is what a real whatever tastes like. And this is what, a, you know, real tomato and real basil and real lettuce. This is what it really tastes like. Yeah. Of course, if you grow stuff at home, you know, some of that fresh feeling, you'll you'll get the fresh taste. But still, the soil in Italy is really old and very rich. 
So you're going to get a lot more flavor, but yes, they do. You know, everything is just fresh. And the thing I loved about living in Italy, because I lived there for about 20 years while I was doing oh, wow. theories and then doing all these programs. And, and I even did a TV series, which I'll, I'll talk about. Um, but so the thing I loved about living there was that, you know, it's always every day you're always shopping in the little town for all your fresh ingredients, you know, and you usually eat lunch at one o'clock. And you come home, bring the stuff home and, you know, um, get ready to eat lunch at, you know, for your one o'clock lunch and lunch is usually a bigger meal, but it's so much fun because every day you're, you have to shop for fresh ingredients. So, uh, and you're able to do that in the little town, you know, one store for your cheeses, one for fresh pasta, if you don't want to make it, one for the breads, one for the vegetables and fruits. And so it was just really, really, um, uh, that, that I love that, that part I love. Yeah. And, uh, but you're absolutely right. The freshest, whenever you cook, whatever you make, um, use the freshest ingredient, you know, lettuce is not just lettuce or a tomato is not just a tomato. If you use a hothouse tomato versus say one that maybe you've grown in your backyard or one that comes specifically from a farm that, you know, really grows those tomatoes, you will really, really notice the difference. It's just, it's just, just using fresh the freshest ingredients that you can get because the flavor is uh the flavor's still there Phenomenal, you know yeah. when something has to travel miles and miles you know to get to your table you know two weeks three weeks that flavor just keeps dissipating and dissipating along with any minerals or any of the good stuff that's in it right. for you so you're really not getting everything that you should be, but you're absolutely right. It was like I had an awakening. It was like my taste buds were awakened by this incredible food. It it is so important to uh, use the freshest and the best ingredients for whatever you cook. When I was in Italy, I remember just the tomatoes were so red and so big. I never saw tomatoes that size and even the lemons. Oh my God. They had, they were, oh, so, yes. it, it was like crazy. I never, I never saw such bright yellow lemons and they were so big and you would see women on the corners selling the lemons and the tomatoes. And I also yes. realized that you, you get full with small portions, you know, like over here yes. you eat a lot more, but over there you could eat just a small portion and you get full right Right away and I think it has to do with the freshness of the food you know I think yes. it makes a big difference you know it, it does it does make a it makes a big difference in many ways also it helps your metabolism work better so you metabolize the food better um and your body adjusts to the food better you know metabolizing it because there's it, it's just, it's fresh. It's at, it's real, real food with real vitamins and minerals and everything that you need um, in it to, you know, help your body work efficiently, really. But that's absolutely right. You do get, you do get fuller and they do. I mean, it's typical to serve smaller portions there. And, uh, you know, the, the typical Italian way to eat is in courses. So, you know, like your first course um, is usually a carbohydrate. So it could be like a rice or pasta dish. And then, then they'll do like a second and third course. So that could be like a meat dish or now a fake, well, fake <laughs> plant protein, plant protein. And then, you know, you might have a vegetable dish and then a salad. You eat the salads last because, you know, where we eat salads first here in the U.S., but they eat salads last because the idea is you don't want the rest of the food to get cold. So you eat the salads last because like if you're having pasta or risotto for your first course, you don't want that to get cold. But um, and and but what I was starting to say is so they eat all these courses, but each course is is a small portion. It's not like they have a bowl of spaghetti and a bowl of meatballs. And, you know, right. it's just a small portion um, it's almost like a tasting, you know, tasting platter. So if you go most of the times, like if you eat in family homes, um, 
they'll just eat very simply and they might just have like a pasta dish or a risotto and then some cheeses and bread and, and some vegetables. But if you go to say a wedding or a dinner or something like that, then they'll serve everything in courses. Or if it's like a holiday, like for Christmas or any of the holidays, they'll do these multi-course meals. But again, they're just like small portions and it's almost like you're tasting you know, tasting platters, tasting each, uh, a little bit of each. And you're absolutely right. It does. They, they do. It does fill you up um, because of, I think because of the freshness must be lots of fiber in it and everything Right. because everything just so fresh, but yeah, that, I mean, that's also like a, a kind of a secret to the, the deliciousness of Italian food is using the best and the um, freshest ingredient doesn't necessarily mean it's the most expensive but it has to be the freshest you know the freshest ingredient and the best quality ingredient that that you can find because most of the dishes when I was saying like Italian cooking is simplistic most of the dishes are really not made up of lots and lots of ingredients so that's why you have to really get the best of each ingredient to make it a really flavorful dish because you don't use typically a lot of ingredients. So, uh, you know, it's because they believe in balancing, you balance out flavor. So you don't use too much of one or too much of other. So you taste everything. And uh, if you don't get the freshest or the best ingredient, the best quality, Mm -hmm. then you you know you're just uh, gonna miss it it's not the same recipe no matter what you know it's just not going to be the same recipe so right yeah. you know to me like food when i see chefs cook it's like an art it's like you know uh -huh. they come out with beautiful dishes and they just know how to prepare it and make it look beautiful when it comes out you know especially in restaurants and you know yeah. but what, like we were saying it's not the same when you're cooking at home you know it's it, you know it's it's better because you know what you're putting in there it's not yes. pounds of butter you don't know yes. how how long the food's been there and you know what the yes. quality is so what's your intake about you know i know i've heard you say that you know you should do most of your cooking at home maybe you'd like to yes. like you know talk a little bit about that and tell people why yes important to do that it, re it really is I mean I don't like to say that because I you know I knew there's restaurants out there really hurting <laughs> yeah business but you know I always say it's you know it's fun to eat out a rest at a restaurant but it's not something you should be doing every single day of the week you know if you want to do that for a weekend thing you know or like one day the, right. out of the weekend you go out as a treat so the reason you should be doing that is because just what you said, you know what you're putting in the food. Um, they're not, you know, when someone makes your dish, they're generally, they're not looking at the calorie content or, you know, what quality of olive oil. They just have olive oil that and butter that they're right. using for all these meals. So you, and you don't know how much they're putting in, are they putting in a lot of, you know, what kind of what quality of ingredients are they using you just do not you know you don't know that and what happens is generally i know people that they go out to eat like constantly and they they're constantly like putting on weight and you know in an unhealthy way not right. saying but you know they're and they're always like i don't know why i'm always putting on weight i'm eating like you know um things that they think are not really a lot of calories or something, but, you know, it's all processed because restaurants have to do things quicker. Fast food places obviously have to do things quicker. So unfortunately they do have to use things that are more processed and your metabolism, you know, it just sits in your body like junk. It doesn't metabolize. Right. It goes, you know, to fat, and things that you don't want. And uh, that's what happens. So yeah, it's really important to try to cook at home as much as possible. Try to cook as much of your own meals. And I know it's really difficult, especially if people have kids and they're running, you know, work, kids, you know, school activities and all that. It is really difficult to do that. 
But if you can't do every single meal at home, then at least try to do at least one meal at home or maybe your, you know, two meals and then just one meal that you grab somewhere or something. But if you have to get something, try to make sure it's the least processed of anything. I always tell people, if you're looking for a quick snack, go to the fruit and vegetable aisle, you know, get, um, they, they usually have peeled and cut carrots or just get a fresh apple or a fresh peach or, you know, fresh apple, wash it off. And that's a, that's a better snack than grabbing, a bag of something that has like a, a list of ingredients this long that you don't even know what it is. So the best thing is the least processed items, um, the freshest items you can get. But yeah, it's really much healthier if you can eat at home and uh, try to stick to fresh, really fresh ingredients. But eating healthy at home is the, is the most optimum. Now, for people that are like really busy, are there any recipes maybe you could suggest that are easy to make that don't take a lot of energy that they could throw together, you know, that would be tasty for their family and won't be so, you know, won't take so much energy to make that it would be quick, easy and so forth? Yes. Well, like, for instance, I know in the summertime, something quick to make is a cold rice salad. So if it's because I know people usually don't like to have hot stuff. So you can make a cold rice salad, just, you know, you can even get use brown rice or quinoa, which is healthy. Um, and all you have to do is make that. I mean, if you really want to cut corners, I don't advocate using a microwave a lot, but if you need to do that, it's better that you do that than make something unhealthy. They do have brown rice and quinoa and, um, that you can use couscous also you can probably do in the in a microwave couscous is actually a pasta that only takes a, like two minutes to cook and you can make a cold couscous salad that's really good all you do is make get couscous whatever you might have vegetables or meat or um cheeses left over from say the night before just make some quinoa or couscous couscous takes less time to cook yeah um and put it in a bowl, a little bit of olive oil and chop up celery. You can even buy celery already chopped up. Some vegetables, whatever your favorite vegetables are, cherry tomatoes, just um, cheese cubes. If you want to add tuna, you can add tuna and, you know, drizzle some olive oil. If you have some fresh basil or fresh parsley, add that in. And that's really a quick meal. And you can either do that with pasta, quinoa, couscous, um, brown rice. So that's a, that's a really quick meal. And that's something that's really, really easy to do and uh, doesn't use a lot of heat, you know, if you don't want to use your range or your oven, which I don't like to use in the summertime right. either because it raises the temperature of the house. You know, as I said, if you need to put it in the micro, do it. But if you use couscous, it only takes like two minutes really to uh, cook. And that's a quick, cool meal, you know, to make something. Like I, I happen to love couscous and I, I you know, know, it's, it tastes great. Like if you grill maybe like a salmon or something, you know, outside you and you put yes. those two together, it's like the taste is yes. phenomenal and it fills delicious. you up. That's, that's a delicious thing to do is grill a piece of salmon. And then if you're using your grill for the summer, you're absolutely right. And then you serve it on top of the couscous, a little bit of olive oil, maybe some balsamic vinegar. And it's such an easy meal. And again, it's a great summertime meal also. You're absolutely right. And it does it does fill you up. And if you want to add some veggies with the couscous, like spinach or broccoli or something, you know, that you can uh, chop up real quick or buy it, you know, already chopped if you if you don't have the time to do that and just mix it in with the couscous. It is really, really good. Yes. And healthy for you too. Yeah. And you know, I, you know, I have some family members and friends that are just like phenomenal when it comes to cooking. They they don't even measure. They just know exactly how to <laughs> how much to put in. And it's like amazing. Yeah. And I consider myself an okay cook, but I'm not yeah. like I wouldn't consider myself like a chef or a, a phenomenal cook. So for a lot of people, I talk to them, they're like, oh well, I don't really cook good, you know, and <laughs> they go out and they order food because they don't think they're a good chef or a good cook. Right. So for people who like maybe they don't have 
have that talent. Like they don't, you know, they, they just, you know, aren't that great when it comes to putting together meals and they don't have enough of confidence in themselves to try different meals because every time right. they try, it doesn't taste that great. What right. suggestions would you have to them? Like what tips could you give them to like help them with their cooking, to improve their, their style and their taste of, of food so they can, can make easy, you know, food yes. at home. At him, exactly. Well, I grew up with just what you said, like my grandparents and and family members that they don't they don't measure. And if you would ask them for a recipe, it's like, well, just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, what's that mean? So actually, one one of my relatives in Italy, who I forget, I wanted to know her recipe for these biscotti. I finally said, look, let me be there when you make them yeah. and I'll measure, you know, what you put. But I actually do the same. Like when I cook, it's really a little bit of this, a little bit of that. With baking, you have to be a little more exact. You really do have to measure and know what you're, you know, cooking. Right. With a lot of pop dishes, I have a certain amount of this or that I like in my dishes. So yeah, people need to develop their own style and kind of develop and kind of an intuitiveness to the ingredients, you know, yeah. um, get kind of a relationship with their food. So taste what you're doing. It's really not rocket science. It's not that difficult. The best way to do it is to just try well, I, you know what I think the best way to do it is um, get it, get it, pick up a cookbook and uh, try, you know, just emulate or, or do the exact recipe from that recipe. You're going to be like, you know what? I think there's too much olive oil for my taste. Cause everybody does have different, different tastes. Oh, for sure. So, you know, or I think there's too much salt or too much this or too much that. And then what you want to do is double back. And the next time you create that recipe, try to um, try to make it your own so that it fits what you like and just, you know, maybe take away a little bit of olive oil, only use a little bit, or maybe there wasn't enough. So you're going to add a little bit more until you get that recipe just the way you like it. Right. But it does take a little bit of, you know, kind of trying. Um, but I, I always tell people, these are my recipes, but you need to use them. But, you know, develop your own style for your own taste, because th these are recipes that I've developed and, and they're my own taste, but you might like a little bit more of something a little bit less. So feel free to use them and develop your own style. So, but yeah, um, that's the important thing. People should try to develop their own, their own style of how they like, you know, what they, what they like. Maybe you don't like olive oil. I know people that don't like the flavor of olive oil. So try another, you know, try another oil that right. you might want to substitute avocado oil, grapeseed oil. Um, there's so many other oils out yeah. there. Try. So, you know, or maybe you want like a lighter tasting olive oil. So, you know, there, there's so many different ways that you can switch up a recipe and they're not, recipes are not meant to be written in stone. So I always tell people to feel free to switch up. You know, if you don't like, cause you know, the typical sauce, Italian sauce has basil and tomatoes, garlic, onion, a little bit of onion, yeah. olive oil. And that's pretty much it. But hey, if you don't like basil or you don't like onion or you don't like garlic, feel free to take it out. Right. Try something else. You know, what I do sometimes now, I actually use, um, I try to make my dishes um, have more purpose to them. So in other words, I even do things like I add cumin or turmeric mm. Italian dishes because they're really turmeric and cumin are not that tomatoes and basil are not good for you, but turmeric, cumin um, are things that are really good for you. Right. So it kind of adds another level to your food. So right. experiment with that. I experiment with that all the time, finding these um, herbs and spices that have health benefits. And I add them into my cooking as well, because then it brings a whole other purpose to, to your food. 
That's interesting. Yeah. It's basically like practice makes perfect. You really yes. have to listen to your taste buds and go with what, what you really you do. Go with what you really exactly with what you really, really like. like. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. That's great. And I know that you've written a couple of cookbooks. So can you tell us about that? Yes. Yeah, so um, I mentioned the first one, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. So that one was um, pretty much, as I was saying, like a memoir of li visiting and, and living in these little towns in Italy and uh, kind of discovering them because I discovered the little town that my grandfather was from where they had the vineyard wow. and some little um, tidbits kind of from experiences in in that town yeah. and recipes from all these places that I went to and just kind of charming experiences with people and you know because the people yeah. there have a lot of character they do. so so that that book is about that and that the first book has the most basic if anyone is just starting out I always tell them if you want it, a cookbook that is just very easy to use that one has all the most basic recipes and the easiest recipes. Um, and then my second book is called The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. They're all the basic art of Italian cooking, but the second one is subtitled Holidays and Special Occasions. Oh, that's so, wonderful. Yeah, so that one was all about, it goes from uh, Christmas Eve to let's see christmas eve christmas day each chapter is a different holiday christmas eve christmas day um new year's eve new year's day um valentine's day oh wow oh i forgot la bufana the epiphany which is in between uh which is right after new year's so la bufana is the christmas witch i don't know if you've ever heard of that but that's a tradition the italians have right on january 6th and then Carnival, which is like their Mardi Gras in Europe. So each chapter is devoted to a holiday. And of course, I have like holiday stories in there. And then there's a menu and recipes that go with it. And then my third, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, is subtitled Da Vinci Style. Because while I was in Italy, I started researching more and more Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. The things I did there just fascinated me. And... The more I found out about him, I found out that not only did he do, you know, the artwork and, right. and sign stuff, but he also was a foodie and he loved cooking and uh, he, he invented some things for the kitchen that we use that wow. were kind of hidden because, I mean, everything else overshadowed that, you know, the Mona Lisa, that's all people yeah. talk about, but he invented the fork and knife, like the table setting. Oh, did he really? Yes, he invented that. He invented the olive oil press. He also wow. invented the rotisserie for the chicken. And uh, there's there's so many things that he invented. And he was also a like a, a, a meal planner, wedding planner. So the legend has it that he planned, he really did plan out the person that was the real Mona Lisa he planned out her wedding, the meals. and Really? Everything. Yeah, they had entertainment and all this. But the really interesting thing was that, so while he was going to school in Florence, um, in, in the main area of Florence, downtown Florence, he went, he was in school with Botticelli, who was also a very famous artist. And uh, so they needed to support themselves. And well, Leonardo da Vinci first became a waiter in a restaurant on Ponte Vecchio, which is like the bridge in Florence. And what happened one night was that the chef became sick and actually he died of food poisoning because oh, back wow. then he knows what they did. So he quickly became the chef of the restaurant. Oh, wow. And uh, what happened was though, they ended up firing him because back then, they did use to serve food in these gigantic portions. And his idea was, I mean, the idea of bringing aesthetic value to the plate comes from Leonardo da Vinci. Really? So, 
Yeah, so he started creating these beautiful plates with like small portions and and he felt that balancing your plate is like balancing the palette. You know, you had to balance the colors on a palette. You have to balance the plate. So he started doing that and people were complaining because they wanted these gigantic portions. Yeah. So he ended up getting fired and him and Botticelli opened their own restaurant. You can actually find some of this stuff on the internet. They ended up opening their own restaurant, which again didn't last for long because they decided to draw out the menu artistically. So you kind of had to figure out, you can find the menu online actually. And they did the same thing. Everything was served aesthetically in little portions and all. So that lasted about six months. But anyway, so it was really, really interesting. So I wrote this book. Each chapter is actually devoted to a town in Italy that da Vinci lived in um, because he did, he used to get commissioned to do all these product projects. Oh, wow. And we live in different towns. So each, each chapter, I think there's 10 chapters devoted to a different city in Italy that he lived in and the recipes from that city and a little bit about you know, what uh, Da Vinci did. And then the one thing um, I put a special touch in there, which are uh, Da Vinci loved writing poetry. And he had some poetry in his notebook that was found about like different fruit trees and nut trees and food. So I, it was written though in old Italian. So I had a scholar translate them into English and they're wow. Included in the book also to give you kind of a feel for Da Vinci. Uh, but that was really, I loved researching book that book. That was a lot of fun. And then yeah. my, my latest book, there are two books that I just did. One is my book that um, what I, what I decided to do, you know, there was the pandemic and I really couldn't get to Italy. So I had all these diaries that I kept while I was living in Italy. And I decided to turn that into a book series. So I am I just released actually the first one is called The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Diaries and it's subtitled Seasons because it's divided into uh, each chapter is a season with recipes and stories. Actually, they're, they're diary entries from that. Mm -hmm. Season. So I still wow. have many more left. So I'll be making that a series. But the other project that was really interesting is I was selected to translate from Italian to English, a book that is by um, an award winning Italian journalist. Her name is Laura Donna Donny. She's known as the Italian wine girl. <laughs> and she's now living between Italy and the, the US. But she wrote this book that was um, it was translated. The title is called "How Wine How Wine Can Change Lives," and mm -hmm. it's it's really interesting. It's backstories of these little family wineries in yeah. Italy. Oh wow! So, so that was just released, also. So they're my books, and then I do have a lot of other um, coffee table books that are devoted to one topic, like the basic art of pizza, the basic art of pasta, the basic art of coffee. The basic art of cocktails. Wow. Of creating the custom, custom writing, the basic art of experiencing Venice. And uh, those are, so yeah, those are all my books. <laughs> wow. Those are amazing. I love it. You, know, you hit a lot of interesting topics, things that I think a lot of people would have a lot of interest in. And especially when you talk about holidays, people get so stressed out during the holidays. And, they do. you know, how nice would it be to have a book where you could just get some unique recipes that are easy to make that, yes. you know, that you wouldn't even think of making. And, and it's always nice to have something unique. People love to try things that aren't the everyday recipes you know exactly and and i also tell people you know it's titled the basic art of, Hol of italian cooking holidays and special occasions but you can make any day a special occasion by doing a special recipe right then so, you know use the recipes in there for it doesn't have to be a holiday special occasion you can use it for really just to create a special meal also. You're absolutely right, yes. I love that, that is awesome. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I also was uh, looking at you have a podcast. So tell me a yes. little about that podcast, I love it. 
Yes. Well, so again, because of the pandemic, yeah. I was supposed to start a radio show and do a TV series in the U.S., and all the studios were closing down and locking in every day. It was mm. like, can I come to the studio? No, it's locked down. Yeah. So, so I'm like, you know what? The easiest thing to do is just start a podcast from my own exactly. home office. And I decided what I decided to do, I wanted to make it because especially because of the pandemic, very positive. I just want it to be fun and right. topics that are fun that, you know, people can, uh, would enjoy listening to and just kind of as a diversion, because I think we, especially during that and, and still do need some diversions, need some positive things to just talk about or learn about, you know, and cooking is definitely a diversion, but the podcast isn't just about cooking. It's about, um, so the tagline is it's the Maria Liberati show where food meets art, travel, and life. So we do everything from books and culture and art and, um, you know, cooking, of course, and cocktails and coffee and uh, trying to think of anything else. I love it. Um, so, you know, I combine a lot of things, home design, home garden, you know, DIY, do it yourself things. So I, as I said, just all fun things that people can do and, you know, or just listen to without um, any negativity. So I yeah. thought it's really important to bring, bring this positivity out there. So that's my podcast. And I'm hoping to get my TV series up and running. I did what I was mentioning is so when I was in Italy, um, I did do a, P a TV series for PBS that we filmed in Italy and oh, uh, wonderful filmed it. Well, actually, some of it was filmed in Amalfi. You were talking about the lemons. Oh my gosh, the yeah. lemons are just well. That's you know, where I saw them in Amalfi. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, it. And they're just like you know they're around like they're like we have uh, pine cones here in because I'm in Pennsylvania. You have pine yeah. Cones. You know, well, the lemons are just there. And I, I remember just, oh my gosh, lemons. And I, I picked them up and I took them to uh, my, my home in, in Abruzzo when I was done filming, but it was just amazing filming there. We filmed in Amalfi and then Ravello, which is, you know, there's Positano, Amalfi, yes. Ravello is at the very top, which was absolutely beautiful. So it was filmed in English. But uh, for PBS here in the U.S., so I was planning to do a TV series here in the U.S., and hopefully I'll be doing that again. I do have a channel on Roku called The Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Marie Liberati, so that's a channel there, and uh, you can watch some of my videos there. I do have some streaming videos from the podcast and from some cooking um, appearances and just cooking videos that I've done, so that's there also. Now you have a website also. What's the name of your website again? Yes, the website is marialiberati.com. And I have another one, the basic art of Italian cooking.com. And then there's the website for my podcast, the Maria Liberati show.com. I love it. You know, you've done so much. It's amazing. And and you know what? everything people think so many things are hard but with a little guidance you know yes. all the things that you talked about can be very easy to do you know yes. recipes for the holidays italian cooking you know um yes. you know making pastries and making different recipes you know during different seasons and the holidays you know just with a little guidance and using your taste buds to, to try to play around to see what you like not exactly what you think the recipe should taste like but what you exactly. like is yeah. is a wonderful concept i love that so much you know and exactly is is there anything else you would like to tell the audience before we close um i guess just you know as an extension of what you said it's important to you know kind of dip your toe in the water it sometimes it's overwhelming you're like oh i can't do this you know especially if maybe you haven't done a lot of cooking it's like oh i can't do this and you get all frazzled <laughs> Just, just, it's like when you jump in the pool, you know, if you, you got to jump in the pool and uh, just go ahead and jump in, you know, <laughs> what you have to do with cooking is just jump in. And just, if you don't, it's just like anything else, just get started. Just try, just pick something, anything, you know, that you can pick and just 
just start and you'll be really surprised at how simple and easy it, it really is. Just like you said, yes. Well, you know, Maria, this has been an amazing conversation. I love everything you've done. You know, you you've accomplished a tremendous amount of things. And I just give you kudos for everything you've done and for providing so much great information to our listeners and, you know, showing them, you know, the steps of, you know, how to, you know, easily become, you know, a, a, a cook and how to improve your cooking and how to use your taste buds. All these things were amazing. And your stories from Italy were just phenomenal. And you've taught me I didn't you know when it comes to Leonardo da Vinci I didn't I didn't know those things that that's amazing you know I I love yes, it yes. <laughs> you know thank you so much for coming on the show and I look forward to maybe having you again and maybe we could discuss some more things about cooking thank you Definitely. I really appreciate thank it. you thank you Stacy thanks thanks so much for having me also thank you oh you're very welcome have a great day Maria thanks you too